everybody, my name is Nathan Johnson and I am extremely excited to welcome you to our webinar tonight. We have the great privilege of having quite a quite an incredibly talented artist with us. I'm going to tell you all about him in a moment. So my name is Nathan Johnson. I have the great privilege of being the executive makeup artist at QC Makeup Academy. QC Makeup Academy is a well-respected and long time running distance learning program that makes it much more possible for people who have dreams about working in creative fields to achieve those dreams while not necessarily living in a big city where they can get access to the quality education or the people who are experienced in the industry that they need. So it's a fantastic school and I am honored to have been with them for nearly a decade. If you're not sure who I am, I'm, like I said, the executive artist for the school. Um, I've been in the industry <coughs> kicking around for a couple of decades. Um, I've worked with over 700 celebrities. They include people like Paul McCartney, Liza Minnelli, RuPaul, Alicia Keys, Kate McKinnon. I was the artist on two seasons of TV's Project Runway, and I've been most pleased to be a global artist and educator for international brands, including Sephora, Cover FX, and now, of course, with um, my beloved QC. So the first thing I want to do is tell you about my dear friend, Mark Harvey. We have we've known each other for a very long time. For a minute. It's been a minute. We've yeah, known each other yeah. for And you might wonder why he's sitting and I'm standing. It's because the height differential between us is so extraordinary <laughs> that it... <laughs> I'm a giant. <laughs> and I'm, I'm on the opposite end of the scale, even with my high heel boots. So Mark has been in the industry for over 13 years. Yeah. He has... He's been called the king of the airbrush, and I'm gonna tell you guys that's for really good reason, and you are gonna see that all live and in action today. So be prepared to learn a tremendous amount. But beyond that, Mark's accomplishments, and I'm gonna tell, tell him about a few, and then he's gonna pepper in a few more. He has worked with a whole host of celebrities, one of whom that I get a little titter over is Susan Lucci, because she's like an icon for yeah. like year upon year upon year. Um, our beloved Fantasia, Yolanda Adams. Mm -hmm. He also has developed product products for well-known companies. Yes. Some of which have been featured on the set of The Hunger Games. Yes, yes, yes. Element 2, Pro. Yeah. Pretty Great fantastic. Line. Great line. He is also... Um, one thing that I think is pretty incredible, he's broken a lot of barriers. He is the first African-American man to be recognized as a beauty expert on both HSN and um, Shopping Network Canada. Yeah. So he's breaking barriers yeah. Yeah. and he's, um, what I also love about you, and we're gonna talk about this as we, we go forward, he's all about education yeah. of his clients. So important, it's so important, yeah, I mean, we have to make sure that we, you know, listen well so that we know what our clients' needs are. Um, and if we're educated in what we do and, um, you know, the products that we bring to them and we are educated in ingredients and, um, you know, we just have a great wealth of knowledge, you know, of what we do inside out, then it's, you know, it's easy. It's easy being able to have those clients and retain those clients and, you know, be those clients, you know, favorite, favorite artist. <laughs> the must have. Yeah. So you're saying yeah. there are two things that are incredibly important. And guys, yes. listen to this. Two things that are incredibly important. Being properly educated in a makeup application. Absolutely. And being incredibly educated in terms of ingredients and products and what you're using on your client. Absolutely. Absolutely. Our clients want to know that we have taken the time um, to be able to cater to them. You know, um, they, they're coming to us or they vetted us or however we got that job um, because they don't want to go to a mall or they don't want to just go to somewhere at a counter. Um, so we, you know, when we are in their face, we have to show them that we are the creme de la creme and that, you know, we are, we're, we're, we are well versed in, in all facets of what we're doing with them. So that being said, how important do you believe knowledge in skincare is? It's so important. It, it just, it's, it's the foundation, it's the fundamentals of, you know, what you're going to be doing with their skin. So you, whether you are approaching someone with dry skin, combination skin, oily skin, it's just, you cannot approach every client the same. And so it's, it's extremely important so that our work and our talent uh, really shines through because if you have someone that their their canvas really isn't right, you know, or really isn't um, <laughs> the way it, it you know it should be when approaching with your you know wealth of knowledge as an artist, guess what? 
that artistry is not gonna look great, you know? So it's, it's super important that we know what the skin type is and that we are able to, um, you know, adjust when needed with our skincare. From an ingredient, from an ingredient perspective. perspective. Yes, yes, because not everyone is going to use that same moisturizer or that same primer or that same whatever. So yes, absolutely. It's so, so important. That's super important. I mean, and that's something that I'm always, always reminding people about as well. There is no education when it comes to makeup and skincare, as long as you're learning from people who really know what they're doing and have vested careers in the industry. Absolutely. No education is a waste. No. From the skin straight on through to any sort of um, makeup application That's right. or variations of technique. Yeah. And the other thing, how when you're looking at what airbrushes can do, a lot of people decide, ooh, do I want to learn airbrush, do I not? But right. it can unlock whole areas of the industry for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we want to be able to corner the market, right? As an artist, we, I am all about an artist finding their niche. Absolutely, you should. But you also want to be able to be diverse enough to where any client can say, oh, that artist can do it. That, I don't need to hire, you know, three artists or I don't need to, you know, look any further than this person because I know for a fact that they can achieve whatever look that, that I'm going for. Yeah, and that also allows you, like you said, to unlock possibilities, you know, of keying that runway show or keying that photo session with the top designer or, you know, of course, booking tons of weddings or just whatever. It allows you as an artist to be more versatile. Because not there, there are some people who will not hire you if you don't airbrush. Yes. Yes. It's yeah. completely true, and right. that includes certain editorials, certain, all kinds of things in Absolutely. every area of the industry, right. but also because people view it as an advanced skill. Right. Even if you don't airbrush, having that knowledge and education lets people know you are better trained than your competition. Absolutely, and you decide what degree, to what degree, that you're going to use the airbrush on the job, right? It's not, we're not all the time airbrushing everything. You do have, um, you know, uh, many instances where you are using, it's a trade-off, you're using some traditional, you're using some airbrush, but you know, it just all depends on what you're doing, yeah. So. Yeah, because there are, the, like, the, we, we, we share a lot of friends in the industry, and one of our beloved friends, Eve Pearl, Absolutely. she she does her makeup by hand, and then she finishes with an airbrush. Absolutely. She seals with an seals airbrush, it. so yeah, yeah. The, the, the levels that so which she can choices. use it are, Infinite. And it's gonna come down to Infinite. how you learn and you play with it and you experiment with the device. That's right. You gotta find your own voice. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, some, some questions were pre-submitted um, by the team, and if we had a, by um, the, the students at home, and we're gonna ask some of those, and I'm gonna ask a few of my own, and then we're gonna dive into the webinar. So I did wanna let you guys know, um, there are gonna be moments where things get a little shaky because we're gonna take the camera off the tripod so we can get right in here so you can really see and really learn in the demo. And there's gonna be a few minutes where you guys will see me snapping some photos. And the reason I'm gonna snap those is so that later you'll just be able to see photographs of what he's done up close. All right, so there's gonna be a, a few little different things. And also, guys, thank you for tuning in. This is the first thank time so that we're, we're bringing in. <laughs> Love it a renowned artist to, <laughs> to share with you guys. So it's, it's quite, quite a fantastic thing. So the first thing that I wanna um, ask Mark is, what, yes. what drew you to the beauty industry? I'm just an artist. <laughs> I am a consummate artist. I tell everyone that. It's, it's um, my passion, my love for creating, really, more than anything. That's it, I'm, I'm a artist, creator. Artist slash creator. Yeah, being said, I'm gonna take it deeper with you. <laughs> what, um, what made you want to do it on three-dimensional faces, the human, mm. versus being able to do it on a palette? It's funny because I, always, I call myself the accidental makeup artist because I, that is what I started out doing at all performing art schools that I went to. I sketched, I drew portraiture, I, you know, pastel, charcoal pastels, blending, highlighting, contouring. I was already doing it. Never in a million years did I think that I would, you know, I guess parlay it into a career really until I saw how gratifying it was doing it on a 3D, on, on, on people. I started doing it as a hobby and then, yeah, and did, did, from there. Did, the, did, did the deal get sealed when suddenly you were seeing how much it changed people's confidence and self-esteem? Completely, because I started out working with modeling agencies. So 
I started out doing what a lot of makeup artists want to eventually start to do after they've kind of paid their dues and whatever, whatever. All by accident. But, uh, well, not all by accident. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that lucky. I had an amazing mentor, and maybe that'll be another, oh, that's a whole nother, you know, happy hour, another another happy hour topic. business, right? Talking about the business and your growth and your, you know, how you just get your foot in there and get started. But, um, so yes, I was fortunate enough fortunate enough and blessed enough to have a mentor that was completely selfless and saw my talent and wanted me to realize it and say, hey, you have been an artist since you were able to have a object in your hand, you know, pencil, pen, you know, paintbrush, which is true. And so, yeah, so I was like, oh yeah, I have been, yeah. I don't care what my parents say. <laughs> I'm gonna be an artist. <laughs> and, guys, you see, isn't it interesting to see that? Like, you gotta chase no. your heart because we we sure. talked about this, and students bring this up all the time. What do I do? My parents say you can't succeed at this. Right. Can absolutely. you succeed at this? You can absolutely succeed at this. You just have to have that drive, and you have to have a vision. You have to have a vision for what you are wanting to turn this career into. You can't just start off painting faces. You literally have to have a vision and a goal and and take and a step toward that goal towards it each and every day absolutely if you don't have a plan yeah. you, you you won't get like like even no. though he was an accidental makeup artist yeah. he yeah. had a plan it got oh, where yeah. he needed to go oh, yeah i have another question that, that i'm curious about yeah given that you know you had learned so much on working on a flat surface a piece sure. of paper now sure. to bring dimension into something that's completely flat is way harder than yes. to bring dimension into something that already has dimension yes do you feel it might be really beneficial for makeup artists to study art yes absolutely because you're telling you're saying that it it is infinitely harder but that is the that is really one of the first steps of doing of, of art artistry and portraiture is making those highlights pop and making those, you know, the whites pop and the, you know, if you're doing black and white, the shades of gray and the shades of black. And then if you're working with pastels, knowing how to, you know, knowing color science and knowing color theory. So actually that is one of the first things you learn. So is how to make it as real as, is how to make it as real as possible. And with that comes you always, learning how to, you know, highlight, contour, you know, just making it as real as possible, yeah. And, and yeah. guys, I'm gonna, so yes, there's something everybody in every makeup school does ever in any mm -hmm. art school. Mm -hmm. You start to work with shade. That's They'll right. do one shade. color That's on right. one side, another on another, make them gradiate Pretty through deep. a spectrum of colors. That's right. They'll start with one deep color and be able to work it down into nothing. Absolutely. Nobody realizes how important those simple exercises are so important. And they can be transformative because they can also change how you start to work a gradient on a face. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's part of, of what it is, whether you're working in two dimensional or three dimension really. Yeah. yeah. So I want to know um, also, like, this is an interesting thing for me, especially we've seen that he has broken barriers, broken ceilings, right? So I want to know for you, um, what gaps did you see in the skincare and makeup industry? And how did you, because we're going to talk about, he had, not only does he have color lines, he has a skincare line that I'm going to tell you from personal experiences. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, that's probably the best way to describe it. Thank you. And the science behind it will also blow your mind. We're going to touch upon that, but yeah. if it interests you guys, and I hope it does, we're going to have him back we'll again to yeah. discuss secrets of skin and how it will connect makeup and skin in general. Absolutely. But that being said, um, with the gaps that you've seen, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what steps have you taken to fill them? So what are the gaps and what have you done? So I always notice that, well, even kind of now, uh, I still notice with Instagram artists or I, I say Instagram artists, but just people that post a lot of their artistry and technique on social media, um, that that was a big part of what was missing is, you know, how does this help my skin or how will this help your client's skin? Um, in any way, does it have any type of benefit? Um, we're so focused on covering, 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 making you know, making sure that we're covering flaws and doing the artistry that the most important thing, which is the skincare, uh, which will allow us to not have to use so much coverage. Um, I feel, I feel that it was 
you know, lacking in that area for many brands that were innovative brands, I'll say that. So for many airbrush brands or for many brands, pro brands, the skincare element was lacking. Yeah, well, well a lot of them, you're, you're right. A lot mm -hmm. of them it is, and especially if you do watch the people who end up in the Instagram cycle who aren't trained but watch right. other people. It's all about just caking it on the face. Right, right. It's about being heavy, using the exact same product on every single every day. Every yes, yes. And yeah. it, it, lacks, it, it lacks the, number one, the thing that we need to do for our individual unique client. Absolutely. You, and it, again, no one's the same. Right now, I did a peel, <laughs> well, I don't know, two, two days before I have to be on camera. I did a peel, you know, and so I have some irritation going on under here. But I'm, you know, I'm covered and I'm happy because I know I have that layer of skincare that is going to, you know, make my skin look great after I wash my face. So it's not, I'm not just, I haven't just covered my face with some waxy, heavy, you know, product that probably is going to have some adverse reaction to my freshly peeled face. And yeah. create a dreadful mask. And create a, yes, absolutely, absolutely. So there's another thing that I want to talk to you about that I love, like, I'm sure a good reasoning behind the color in your brand mm -hmm. stems from this issue. Yeah. But for the longest time, and anybody who's ever worked on deep skin, and that mm -hmm. being any skin <laughs> from like medium onward, it was often created by looking at colors and then starting with white as a base, which is yeah. pretty darn impossible. And anybody who's got warm, it's going to, you're, it's a recipe for ashy. Right. It's a recipe for not being able to match people's skin. Absolutely. So one of the things that's most wonderful about your brand is it's wildly inclusive. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know what? I did have mentors from, from afar uh, that I would reference when I was creating um, MHB cosmetics and brands that I have worked with uh, prior where I was that person for them that you know they couldn't understand why how come we can't make any great deep tone colors how come they always turn out like this or always turn out like that well you know i had like i said the mentors from afar with reggie wells and sam fine and even kevin aquan and wave andy you would think like what those are no those are they, they did makeup back in the day but they had elements uh, a part of the primary colors that you would always need to have to adjust in order to, you know, create the perfect um, skin tone, whether it be, you know, medium tan, dark, deep. Um, so that's what I did. I was like, wait a minute. You actually need a ton of blue or you actually need a ton of red or, you know, whatever in order to create this color, which is when you look at some brands, the deeper colors, completely not saturated enough with pigment. So that was my big aha, is that I had a secret science. <laughs> Everybody loves I had a secret science, I did. No, I had a secret science for creating my darker shades. Yeah, and that's spectacular. Yeah. But also, yeah. there's a misconception about it to, I think, a tremendous number of people. Well, one of my favorite misconceptions, because I just think it's so funny, is when people go, people with dark skin don't need SPF. I oh, always, uh, I always find, that's one of my like favorite like misconceptions. Listen, that's why I'm sitting up here, you know, 25.5 colors right now, okay? Because I did not SPF properly. I'm working on it now with my skincare, um, but also with the work of some peels or whatever. But yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I have a very, very, very active, overactive melanin. And what that does is it actually creates, instead of a burn, it just makes me look more like ruddy, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because like that, my, my melanin is saying, oh, okay, you want to keep me out in the sun? Okay, I'm going to produce, I'm going to protect myself. You have to, we have to use SPF, yeah. Yes, it's, it's super yeah. important. Yeah. That's one, but yeah. the other one that I really love is that so many people, and it's not, and I think it's the case even when people get deeper skin, they don't mm -hmm. always realize that you can have deeper skin and be warm or cool. Absolutely, oh my goodness, I was just talking to a really good girlfriend of mine, African girl, and she was like, you're gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. She's like, Mark, I don't understand why everywhere I go, 
they want to put me in something red. I don't have red undertones. I'm like, I know. You're like super beautiful, chocolate, Godiva, dark, beautiful, wonderfulness. But guess what? She has golden undertones. Or, you know, more, yeah, yellow undertones. So it's, you know, it is, again, understanding undertones and color saturation and, you know, what can I add to this palette? or this canvas, I'm sorry, to make it look as skin-like and as vibrant and, you know, again, it's saturated with pigment like we are in person, you know, so. And I know some of you are probably terrified because you're like, oh no, color science, I'm having a hard enough time identifying <laughs> this alone. But I'm going to tell you guys right now, when we dive into this and he, it's all of your worries will be gone. It's it's almost I'm like you. It's amazing. Color science made simple enough. It's for your so simple. You will be able to look at someone on television and be like, "Oh, they're number six in Mark Harvey's line. Oh, they're number twelve in MHB." Mm -hmm. I know because we're not gonna we're gonna <laughs> tell you this right away because it's one of those questions you're looking for. We're gonna talk about it a little bit later. But his brand is broken down so smartly that you will always you will always know whether or not somebody's you know falls into the golden in, or, or the, yeah that's right that's yep. right so super 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 easy for, so do not have fear because that's one I'd say that's one of the things that scares it even is. even a lot of pro makeup artists yes yeah, it is it is 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 oh, you know are they golden or or neutral or or red or neutral or how far do I go you know between you know playing with you know from one you know, end to the other. You know, do I go a little bit more this way or a little bit more this way or do I just keep them neutral? So I've made it super simple. Super simple. Which I, yeah. I think everybody loves. Yeah. Um, so these are a couple questions from our students. Um, so uh, Kathy asks, how do you develop good chemistry with your clients and gain referrals? So, you know, you just have to be yourself, be relatable, be professional at all times. Um, and just do the best work that you can do, um, you know, yeah. make sure that you know exactly what your client's needs are before you dive in there and give a good service. That's it. Give a good service. When you do a great job yeah. and you are yeah. likable, people talk. They absolutely. People tell their friends. Absolutely. I don't care if it's a corner store where the, you know, the cashier was nice. You know, you're like, oh my God, that guy was really nice. Oh, you know, and then you're like, oh yeah. Go to that deli over there. You know, I had a really good experience, right? That is what we do. That's the nature of, of people. So, be also, that. when people are looking for a makeup artist, yeah. they don't, they usually ask their friends. That's right. That's right. If they know anyone who just got married, they're always going to ask that friend. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, Cassia, what advice do you give to someone starting out in the beauty industry? Now, this is a question that he answered in his Get to Know Me, but it's, it's worth repeating. Yeah, so, you know... I think, again, finding a mentor is really great. That's, again, that's another conversation. Um, but be focused, know what you wanna do um, in the industry and work towards that goal. You know, it is it is just like any other job that you would do, right? It, it is, it is your, it's, it's a job, but if you're wanting it to turn into a career, I think you should always be looking at it you know, from the very beginning. Um, but yeah, work hard. <laughs> and there's one, one other thing too, like uh, one of my secret secrets, and I know it's one of his too, because this the second you meet this man, you fall into his spell. He's, so how important is likability? Oh, sure, See? well, that's, that, you know, you, you just assume that all people should do, should be likable and try their best to, you know, make a good impression, a lasting impression. But I will say this, you know, uh, especially with, you know, social media, a lot of people don't care anymore. So you have to care. You have to care about the impression that you're going to leave with that, that client um, if you intend on having any type of longevity in this, in this career. So it's very important not to just think that by posting images behind you know on your phone all day and no matter how many likes you get digitally <laughs> in the digital world if it's not the same in person then guess what you can hang it up 
truth be told. You can hang it up. Yeah. yeah. The only time likes turn into money yeah. is if you're one of the, what, 0. 0.0001% who That's makes right. it to influencer status. That's right. Otherwise, That's likes right. don't put money in your account. No. It's your ability. Yeah. It's your likability. It's right. your education, training, and how you utilize it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, that being said, Nicole asks, and I'm, I'm this one I'm excited about. Who is your biggest influence in the industry? Ooh, so many. But okay, and I have to say this, and I haven't really spent that much time with him. You would think that I would have, but Reggie Wells, and I, I say that because I grew up during the era of like Oprah, and so many of the models that he did for so many of the Essence and Ebony covers, right? As as a you know as a little black boy, I'm that's what I'm looking at. I'm like. Flawless and beautiful, and I want to model, and I, you know, I want to look like Naomi Campbell. <laughs> Runs to his closet, the, pulls run, out his wig, pulls out my wig, <laughs> right? That's who was doing their makeup at the time. You know, that wasn't what I was honing in on. But as you look back, you're like, wow, these are the people. This is the person that helped shape my Little idea. Fire. That's right, my idea of beauty and glam and Perfection and you know um, Pat McGrath, um, Sam Fine, of course, um, Kevin O'Quan, of course. So yeah, if you, Billy B also part of my '90s. He did lots of the R&B. I was a huge music person, um, studied music. So of course, I saw all of the Missy Elliott and whoever you know SWV and pretty much every <laughs> R&B woman of color he, he worked on. And guys, if you really live great. on Earth, yeah. and this is what you guys yeah. might not realize, yeah. there's no chance that you haven't seen work by every single one of these already. Absolutely. So just zero oh, chance. are you kidding me? Every, every one, every single one of, of the you know 90s, 2000s, even now. So it's... Yeah, because a yeah. lot of those names you've named are behind some of the most famous and influential most music videos it, and it, album covers. Absolutely. And so you've seen the work even if you don't realize you, you did. did. You so did. special note to you guys, go back, watch this section again, absolutely. follow every single one of them. That's right. Follow them. Yeah. And and, and a lot of them have books. They a have, lot of them have how to how to Scott Barnes. I mean, oh Scott Barnes is a he's delight. amazing. He's amazing. It, the different perspective on makeup and glow and natural and it's it, you you always want to have something to reference as an artist just like any other subject that a person would study um so it's very important to to know to know your artists yes all right last question um this is from claudia how do you begin marketing yourself to have people take you seriously just realizing that this is a job. This is a, I mean, this is a profession, not a job. I'm sorry. It's not a job, just a job. It is a profession where people are paying you money, <laughs> right? So that's that's what it is, is that you can't look at it just like a, you know, what do they call it? What do they call the cosmetology school? They're like, oh, beauty that's school. A throw, throw away beauty school or throw away degree or whatever. You can't look at it like that. You, you have to look at it like, hey, this is going to become my brand. You are your brand. So when a person sees that or when clients start seeing that, oh wow, this person takes this really serious and they actually are, they want to <laughs> help you. They want to be your client. They are, you know, um, they, they see the drive and they're drawn to you. Absolutely. And not only that, this yeah. is also how mentors are going to want to mentor you. Absolutely. You know, there's, there's two kinds of people. Yeah. There's, and, and this starts now, guys. Mm -hmm. This starts mm -hmm. now. If you're one of those people who, oh, you watch, your, you watch your educational videos and then three weeks later you call a friend and you try and bang it all out mm -hmm. on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Or are you the person who watches, rewatches, learns again, yeah. practices yeah. it again and again and again, studying the photos, challenging yourself to make sure that they're perfect. Oh, wow, my eyeliners aren't symmetrical. Absolutely. Okay, let me do that again. There's two kinds of people. Yeah. And yeah. this is a wildly competitive industry. Industry, right so but there's room for all of us if yes yes, yes, yes. if yeah. you if put you in the work you have to put in the work and it's so funny you say that I used to um, I had a really amazing client when I first started doing makeup and she really would work with me and she was like mark I love you but you are going to have to get faster 
you can, everybody cannot be the Mona Lisa. Like everyone cannot be perfectly symmetrical and, but she saw the care that I put into every person and to, to the jobs that I did with her. And she obviously liked the result, but I was constantly challenging myself and wanting to be better and wanting to get it, you know, perfect so that the photographer wouldn't have to do anything in post. So yeah, um, <coughs> challenging yourself to always be your best. Yeah. Very so important. now we're gonna we're gonna dive into his brand, and in a, in a couple seconds we're gonna begin. We're gonna introduce you to Alba, who's gonna come and join us in a couple of minutes. And um, what we're going to do now is talk about the brand quick, and then we're going to talk more about the brand as we work our way through that demo and he's, and he's doing things. But he's also very carefully going to tell you everything he's doing. Yes. Like I said, what I love so much about Mark's brand is now, right now, we're talking just about the beauty brand. Mm -hmm. um, it's makeup meets skincare. Absolutely. It so is. why is that so special in the industry? Well, it's special now even more than ever because I do believe that the consciousness of you know the masses the collective people are like okay I actually should be using something great on my skin <laughs> um, it is going to you know make my skin better it's going to make me age slower it's going to you know um, make my makeup look better on my skin um, so but I always that is something that I always felt passionate about so prior to even having my line I always wanted to make sure that I was using, you know, the best skincare or what I thought was the best skincare prior to, um, you know, for prepping my, my client's makeup. So, yeah. And when you guys look, if when you guys, and I want every, everybody, please trust me on this, investigate his site. Because what you're going to find that I think is so astounding is it will educate you. You will learn. You will learn. I you will click so. on a product and you will learn. Break down. Yes, it's mind-blowing. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. impossible to not choose the right things for yourself, sure. for your client. If you want to buy a Christmas present for your mom, you won't make a mistake. You, you will get the right thing. I it's agree. smart. And I've never seen a brand that is educated so clearly. And this is coming, like, I'm, I'm a skincare expert and an esthetician, and I read that brand, and you read that stuff, and I'm like, wowza, yes, finally. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't think the customers are smart enough sure. to be able to digest that sure. kind of information. Well, you know, some people, we've kind of been taught to think on the digital marketing side, digital marketing side of a business that consumers don't spend but only a certain amount of time on a, on a website or on a page. Um, I found that if it's something that they are truly interested in um, and a, a client that is not a what I you know a follower and just oh, I'm just gonna impulse buy this because a million people are saying it, that it's great and they really want to understand what they're buying it is more important for me to have the proper information um, to educate them so that they can use their own critical thinking and buy you know purchase what is appropriate and if, yeah. for a change it puts you in control absolutely yeah absolutely absolutely and there's, there's another thing, he, we, we were talking on the phone um, earlier this week, and one thing that I really loved is he was talking about how incredibly inclusive this brand is. No matter what your needs are, mm -hmm. not only based on your tone, right. from me to him, from people darker than him, lighter sure. than me, everybody in the middle of that is gonna be met tone-wise, but not Absolutely. only that, all of our varying conditions, concerns, and types are all addressed. Absolutely, we, the brand basically starts out with you know, skin inflammation, right? We all know our skin is the largest organ and we all know that anytime we have some type of malady going on with our bodies um, internally, it's due to some type of inflammation, right? Any type of illness is due to some type of inflammation. Well, guess what? It's the same thing with our skin. Um, so whether it's, you know, acne or rosacea or eczema or psoriasis, just whatever, it's inflammation, so that is what the brand has and the line um, has targeted first is certain types of inflammation. Hopefully you look online and you get educated and find out which product would, could potentially work um, and you know, 
use it and see if it's a good fit because that is what we wanted to do is 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 focus on inflammation that it's the brand is my skincare organics organics and air and that's gonna all of that yes. is not only gonna pop up below right now yes it's going to end up in the header of this webinar you will have easy direct links where you can check everything out yes yes air is a stylized word or my skincare is a stylized word with a i r at the end and ARR is actually an acronym for anti-inflammatory response. So that is what I use when I work with these amazing dermatologists and chemists and even a NASA toxicologist. <laughs> kind of wild, Dude, right? This yeah. is, a, this is a, there's yeah. so much science behind this brand. It's, yeah. It, it yeah. could make you dizzy. Yeah, so we worked on, hey, let's tackle inflammation first and then as they continue to use the brand, everything else will get better hopefully for them you know? so we're about to invite alba up but before we do guys here's the point so mark what are the two shining star ingredients in your brand that are a cut above the rest and have huge impact on people's skin rosehip oil and extract because it has one of the highest levels of reoccurring vitamin c and e which are extremely powerful antioxidants we all know this um, C is one of the only natural vitamins and antioxidants that is known to repair the skin and assist in collagen synthesis. And of course, vitamin E just boosts that effect um, even more while conditioning and moisturizing your skin and restoring your moisture. So key barrier. ingredient number one, mm -hmm. rose hip. Rose what hip. is key ingredient number two? Green tea extract. So green tea is also a super powerful antioxidant and great for inflammation. So um, we pretty much already know, a lot of people already know the power of green tea. Um, in, internal. Internal. And external. external. And external, yes. Has very high levels of polyphenols and flavonoids and all of these things that um, are, you know, the kind of building blocks of our um, skin. So, or assisting the skin to fight off free radicals from environmental damage um, and internal issues that we may have that affect our skin. Yeah, because those free, the, the free radicals are like monsters. They yeah. cause these chain reactions that Absolutely. wreak havoc, not only internally, but externally. Um, the yeah. majority of our aging, well, the sun is a number one damager, but all right. of the antioxidants, that, that the, um, all of the free radical True. damage yeah. we get from pollutants, pollutants and so many other things, yeah. Yeah. wreak havoc and those two things combined alone can fast forward you 20 years and we do not want that. No. So that. guys, it's the moment you've been waiting for. We're going to invite Alba up. Um, Mark is going to get everything ready. All right. He's going to, we are going to talk through everything. So I'm going to disappear for a little bit. You guys are going to hear my voice. The camera in a second is going to come off. So you're going to notice a little shakiness guys. It's just making sure you can get a better perspective. And um, this is gonna be pretty wonderful. So I'm super excited to um, yes. let Mark show you why he is called the king of hairbrush. <laughs> and this is gonna be pretty awesome and pretty fun. Mm -hmm.